Appreciate it. Everybody, we're back. Welcome to Sloan Cold Facts Podcast, Season 2. This is Episode 8 in Season 2. We got a special guest. When we started Sloan Cold Facts, as you guys know, man, we wanted to kind of give guys their flowers, guys who are the culture, of the fabric, especially uh, here in Houston, Texas. And today's guest is definitely that. A longtime pro, Westside High School graduate, class of 2007. I always used to wonder, man, like when I stopped playing, like who is the guy in Houston to like carry the torch? Like, yo, I'm a pro uh, overseas, guys, or guys in Europe. And anytime I ask a question or ask somebody, yo, like, who the like who the dude in Europe? Who playing overseas? This guy I was always mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my guy Shannon Shorter. Representing Houston Texas in the building. What's up, man? Hey Lee to be exact. Hey Lee. <laughs> nah, what's up, family? How you feeling? Good. How you doing, brother? Appreciate you joining us long cold facts, man. Um, been wanting to have you on for a long time. Like I said, man, I you know, this show is to give people their flowers and for you to do what you've done. Um, I always tell people like the journey is never easy. People think you know, you play high school basketball, you go play in college, then you pro, and people just think it's this, 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 and oh, yeah. it's never like that. Absolutely not. I appreciate you know? that, though. Oh, man. You know? um, again, man, first things first, I'm, I'm a, we kind of have, like, similar, a lot of similar um, kind of things in our background. The first thing I saw was that you played for the Houston Blaze yeah. a little bit. My guy, Pat Pellerin. Uh, small stint. Small, small stint. stint, yeah. So, Pat, like, so, I mean, when I was in college, when I graduated TCU 05, I was like, man, I ain't, I ain't playing overseas. It's, I heard so many horror stories. I yeah. had teammates play in Italy, didn't get paid for, like, months. Yeah, that's real. So I was like, no, nah, I ain't dying. I ain't messing with it. I ain't going to fuck with it. So about six months later, I was like, man, I kind of miss basketball, what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I had, like, some good games my senior year. I put them on DVDs. I got a little agent. And then it, uh, my guy, uh, Jermaine Green. Yeah. Manger hit me was like, yo, it's a dude, he got a tour named Pat Peller when they going to Chile. Yeah. And he was like, you know, like he kinda looking for players. And I was like, damn, man. It was a summertime. Yeah. So I was like, man, I'm gonna really try this. I'm gonna really try to play overseas. I think this would be a good experience. So I ended up going with Pat to Chile for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like play well, did real and like it just kinda gave me confidence to be like, yo, you could be a pro. Um, and I funny I hit Pat. I was telling him he was like, yeah, man. Ask you know he, he, he was with us for a small time, but yeah, Houston Blaze, man, Pat yeah. Peller, man, Pat P. That's my guy. Yeah, like, I'm still sure. tuned in, tapped in with yep. him to this day. I yep. played in the summer with him in the you know pro am a few times. Yeah, uh, I didn't go to Chile with him, but he did tap me and say reach out to me and was like, you know, I want you to come with me on this tour and okay. etc. And I was yep. planning to do it, but like I think it fell through at the last second. Oh, okay. I can't remember exactly what mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. but it fell through literally like the day before we were supposed to leave. Oh wow! And um, you know, that's just how that yeah. little experience uh right right uh, yeah. happened and etc. Yeah. But yeah. Pat, that, he he's solid. Uh, he with is me. man. He Pat solid with me. That's my dude, man. He really like kind of got my start and like kind of showed me the ropes and kind of even them two weeks kind of like let me know like how to be a professional. What I you know. I was worried about like Wi Fi and the right. food and all that. He right. was like, yo, focus on the basketball, and then you'll get all that. So right. man, shout out to my guy Pat Pellerin. Um Shannon, West Side High School. West Side. Two thousand seven. Oh seven. Who we played for AAU growing up? Hoop Stars. Keith oh, White. Hoop Stars. My guy Keith White. Yeah, that's my dude. Keith White still rolling. Keith got a son now. I think like in eighth grade is yeah. solid. He, he coming, yeah. Yeah, my dude. Okay. Keith White, Hoop Star. Who's on your team? Nathan Walker, Kevin Perkins, Gerald Scott. Uh, Michael Thrash, Mike Davis went to mm. Wheatley. Okay. Um, Warren Webb. Yeah, we had we had Mike Moss. We had some bodies. Mm. We had some we had some dudes. And talk about that time in the city. You know, like when you were in high school, oh five, oh six, oh seven. Who were some of the other guys who you know you remember playing against, battling? Who were high level guys like that? Yourself? Was like top tier. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't, I wouldn't even count myself as top tier in high school. Oh though. really? Like, oh. I feel like I was just somebody that played hard. Uh huh. And just through my effort and et cetera, like, I found success. Okay. You know what I mean? But yeah. Keith White, he taught me, like, outside of life principles, he taught me, like, he was the first person who showed me, like, skill and, like, what okay. a pivot was and making the right reads and making the right passes and getting up shots and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I'm still tapped in with him till this day. Yeah, but as far God. as, like, players at that moment in time, Nathan yeah. Walker was one of them. Yeah. Jay Lucas, BJ Holmes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Gary Johnson. Yep, I just um, saw. G. Then there was some young dudes: T. Griff, Finn. Yep. 
uh, I had Devin McDonald's in my class. What was that Mike. time like for you, like playing in the city? You know, we, we always Houston, we very prideful dudes. You yeah, know what I'm saying? We absolutely. always rep our city and where we from. What was it like for you playing in the city during that time? I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I was teed up. I used to love playing. Like, and my district was like elite too. Okay. In my district, we had Jay Lucas, Tommy, Jamal oh, wow. Finn, Devin McDonald, uh, so y'all Isaiah loaded. Russia, Lord, Cameron y'all. Wells. Ooh. Yeah, we had a solid loaded, district, so yeah. it was always fun. And that was back when HISD was jumping. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's a lot. It's down a whole lot. I ain't really been to a high school game, yeah, so I'm yeah. home now. So I I, I want to get out to some of the yeah, it's, games it's, and yeah. see what it look like. HISD but. is definitely not like it when you were in school for sure. <laughs> it's not even. Is it more close. so like the the competition or just um, skill set? What I think is a competition. I think more so people are like moving further out. Mm. In the city Okay More suburbs I mean like yeah. Obviously you know We grew up in You know Kids growing up in the suburbs But like They going out to Cyprus yeah. And then also too People you know Kids now going like To these charter schools And prep schools yeah, So I, I have seen that Yeah sure. like it's, 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 it's definitely making The um, competition the HISD Look a lot different Than where you What's your school? thought process On the, the youngins Going to these prep schools At well, sophomores in high school and- So for me man Like it's a It's a catch 22 for me Like I, I have my own Charter school Prep school league Okay and so, like, I'm, you know, I I foster that, honestly, sometimes. Like, okay. if kids want to do something different or they got a different agenda, come play at a school in my league. And, it's again, it's, you know, it's kind of like the, the uh, IMG model, Mount Verde. Yeah. Yeah. You go to school for a short period of time, like the European club model for young yeah, kids. Yeah. School, short period of time, the rest you work on basketball. That's it. And so, like, that's where I think more kids, especially high-level kids, are leaning towards not being in school for eight to nine hours a day. Mm-hmm. Maybe doing school for three to five hours in the rest basketball strength, you know, strength training, strength and conditioning. So, um, I mean, I, I just think you know, kids want a, a better basketball experience. Excellent. You know, everybody want to get to the league. Everybody want to turn pro so fast. So, I think a lot of these kids, especially the upper echelon kids, yeah. they trying to get that. You know, like I said earlier, the European club model mm-hmm. where they can work on it early. So, I mean. Again, as a comp- compared to when we was in school, our parents probably would never ever thought about that. Right. You know, it's traditional. You go to school, you play against the kids in the HID in your district, you graduate. That's it. But now parents have a different mindset. And also, think social media also play a big part in that too, for sure. Now, I tell kids all the time when I go holler at them, I be mm-hmm. like, "Hey, yo, it's like a hundred thousand kids, and you're working out right now. Mm-hmm. They not they going to school three, four hours, but other hours they working out. Yeah. So like." Y'all think y'all got the edge? Like, I mean, you can't teach a kid how to be a dog. You can't Correct. teach a kid how to compete. Yep. But you can teach them the game. No, oh, for sure. And that's what they do in Europe. Like, they might not be the toughest. They may not come from that background where you got to really, like, figure it out and fend for yourself. But they smart as hell now. Yeah. And they know how to get a shot off, know how to get to a spot, Correct. know how to make the right reads, stuff that kids, they that like, in the city, in the States, whatever, we kind of bypass and think, like, talent just going. Yeah, athletic Nah, it's not. When you get to that level, it's like, you got to think too. Yeah. No, man. I when I was in um, Switzerland, we had they had a, a a junior team, and so it was kids sixteen years old. But so he he went to school like two three hours. Yeah, practiced with the junior team. Yeah, left and came practice with us the pro team. Yeah, went home did a little study hall did that shit every day every day. Yeah, so he got basketball six to eight hours a day. Yeah, as opposed like you said to a kid they ain't learning geometry and algebra and reading and writing and then basketball two hours. <laughs> and so right. as you can see, although we still pretty dominant worldwide, but like the gap oh, is for sure closing. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. So out of high school, you with the Hoop Stars on West Side. You yeah. signed with N M Corpus Christi. I did. Who was the head coach at the time? Perry Clark. Oh Perry Clark. Okay, yeah. who was at Tulane back in the day, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So I got connected with him through Coach Luke, Big Luke. Okay. So I was originally gonna go to either Wichita State or UTSA. Okay. And um, Devin Gibson. You know who that is? He yep. was, yeah, yeah. Devin, Devin Gibson, coach he was, San Antonio Future now. Big yeah, time. he was in my ear a like, lot trying to get me to go to UTSA, but okay. I was hell been on Wichita State. Mm-hmm. Um, who was the coach then? Uh, Mark Turgeon. Oh, Turgeon was a coach. Yep. Okay, yep. And then Luke called me. He was like, hey, look, it's this guy, Perry Clark. He just got the job at Anum Corpus. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a good look for you. You know, he's going to take care of you. He's my guy. Whoop. So I go on an unofficial visit. He say everything he need to say to my mama and Keith White was with me. And, you know, they, in a sense, they literally, like, made the decision for me rather than me making that decision, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, um, so, if it, but if, if it were up to you, you'd have went to Wichita State. Oh, factual. Oh, okay. Without question. Why is that? Uh, just when I went on a visit. And mm-hmm. then, P, Lil, uh, not Lil, but uh, PJ, PJ, was there? PJ, he yeah. showed love. He told okay. me what it was going to be like, yeah. what to expect. Mm-hmm. And um, just the atmosphere was crazy. Mm-hmm. 
And mm-hmm. I feel like that's like the only thing they had in that city. Yep. And so basketball is either you gonna succeed or you just gonna. There's no way you can't succeed in that situation when it's only basketball. Correct. You know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I ended up at Corpus, and then after yeah. one year, he uh he released me. Now yeah. speaking on that real quick, you, you you said something powerful. You were like you felt like your mom and Keith White made that decision for you. Absolutely. And so, as a 17, 18 year old kid. Why do you feel as though you didn't have as much say so or influence in that decision? I really feel like I did have influence. I just was uh not really like I didn't want to like disappoint. Right. Disappoint mm. my mom, disappoint Keith White, because they were so hell been on like he's saying he can get you to the league, he can do yeah. this, he can do that. And I'm like, but I don't know this man. Like I know this man from a can of worms, you know what I'm saying? And uh but you know, people have a way with words. Yeah. I don't take nothing away from them. You know, I needed yeah. that, though. I, I I feel like that that whole season was, like, a learning experience for me. Like, I started out crazy. We went on a little tour in um uh, uh Canada. Okay. Went on a tour in Canada and then did my thing out there. We come back. He take the ball out of my hands and just as the season went on, I just did not play. Yeah. So I was, my mindset was like, okay, just – Figure it out, work hard throughout the summer, and then, you know, it's going to bounce, it's going to shake yeah. for you. He come to my apartment, drove to my apartment. We driving around the city. He's like, look, if you want to get released, I can help you get released, get your uh, release. This now not even a thought for me, though. So when he said that, I was like, okay, I see where your mind at. But I was in the, after he told me that, after you get released in the session, not knowing what's next, I was in a dark place. Like, I didn't know, I lost confidence. I was just kind of, like, shook, like, I ain't know what to expect. I ain't know what was next. And uh, that's when I ended up at junior college with my man, Ross Hodge, who kind of rejuvenated everything for me, yeah. instilled some confidence in me and let me do what I do. That's what me and Sims got real close, Jay Sims. Uh, Jay Sims with you? Yeah, junior college. Oh, yeah. okay. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to slow down now. Okay, so. Juco was elite. We was now, four in the country. At Corpus Christi. Yep. We're going a little backtrack because, you know, what I do now, I, I'm a, I evaluate and kind of try to educate parents on the recruiting process. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So. And in Corpus Christi, Perry Clark gets the job. You're not really familiar with him. But at, from the advice of your mom and Coach Keith White, you decide to go there. You right. go there. You start out pretty good. And then as a freshman, you don't play. Right. Talk about your mentality that whole year. Like, what, you know, because, I mean, it happened to me. I was at TCU. I had a coach. He was. Re- he told us, like, a month before the season, he was going to resign. Okay. So we had, like, a, basically like a, like a lame duck coach. And so, same for me. I started out early, kind of excited about playing. Yeah, I didn't play it like barely at all the whole year. Mm-hmm. I know for me mentally, I I checked out. I was like, man, I'm just I'm just here. So, speak on your mental state during your freshman year. Uh, I, I was the type my freshman year. I was just was used to be excited to like hoop. Yeah, you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. like, anytime we had practice, anytime shoot around anything, I was the first one on the court. I used to work extremely hard, like after practice type stuff. Shoot yeah. with. My man Stink Norris and, you know, a few of my teammates. And so my mentality was like, look, just stay ready until you get your chance. And right. then control was in your control. But I knew I wouldn't play. So my whole mindset was like, okay, your practice is these going to be your game. Yeah. So you might as well just tee up. And I used to just go crazy in practice. But he just would never we'll play. play. Yeah, we'll play it's crazy. Yeah, and, crazy. Um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So you, you get know. released and then you go to Paris. Yeah, PJC. And Ross Hodge is a head coach. Head coach, the mayor. That's what they call him out there. That's funny. I just, I just talked to Ross Hodge uh, yesterday, actually, yeah. who is currently the head coach of North Texas. Absolutely. And we'll kind of make that correlation shortly. So you get to Paris, and now Jonathan Simmons is on your team at Paris. Absolutely. And who else? We had Jay Sims. We had a dude named Kenny Gabriel. He made okay. it to the league, played Euro League. Oh, wow. Uh, we had this dude from Philly named Doodles. The okay. point guard, uh-huh. solid, one of the best point guards I've ever seen. What was that experience like for you going from the Division One to the JUCO level? It's more so independent. It's more okay. so you really got to get it for yourself. You really got to, you know, provide, work out on your own, um, recover on your own, stretch on your own. You know, it's, it's not like D1 where you have 20 trainers in yeah. the ice tub and then you got people you can call to come rebound for you in the gym. And uh, it's really like, like, you in the trenches for real, and you just really got to figure it out. And but, see, a, a lot of times, man, like parents and kids think like going to JUCO is sweet. Nah, it's like not. it's light. It's some real light killers out there. Yeah, I always try nah, to tell is. them. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. you at Paris with Jay Sims and Ross Hodge. How that season go? 
Um, because now obviously I'm sure you were hungry, ready to prove yourself, yeah, ready to show. True. And again, you from Houston. When that stuff like when setbacks happen, like you know, you eager to show people like yo, like I am him, I still got it. So what yeah. was that like for you? This sophomore I still year? was battling, but like with my confidence initially, oh, okay. yep. you know. And but Coach Hodge had an offense, and he just really believed in me. Like mm-hmm. really, just put me out there and was just like, look, you gonna play? Like who yeah. else gonna play? Yeah. And um, so we had a really good season. We was number four in the nation, and. We end up losing in the regional final to go to Hutch for like the national championship. Yep. Double overtime. I still think about that game. You know. <laughs> okay. But you know who beat y'all? Who beat y'all? Navarro. Who they have? Nobody you really know. Point guard named D Brown. Okay. They had this big man that went to uh, I can't remember where he was. He was like six eight by two eighty. Oh wow. It's okay. big. Just you yeah. be in the paint, just sitting there. You yeah, know. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, that was a good team. It was yeah. a, that game was one of the liveest games ever played in. We just lost in the uh, uh, regional final. I had a good season. I made all region, uh, first team all league, all that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, had some accolades. So now you get recruited all over again. Yeah, yeah. So talk about that process. What was that re- recruiting process like leaving JUCO? Uh, I think I had more wisdom and understanding. You say of, one year or two? One. Okay, you I said just one year. One. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, you know, Juco, you go freshman, sophomore. Right, yeah. So, I was already a sophomore, right, so that was the year yep. I had to. Okay, okay. So, I, um, I had a lot more wisdom with it now. I had a lot more understanding of, like, what to expect, um, my thought process going into it. Yeah. Make, and, and the funny part about it, my mom and Keith White, they wasn't really involved, involved at all on this one. They okay. was just like, look, it's on you. whatever decision you make, we going to ride with you, you know. And um, Johnny Jones was the coach at UNT. Yep. Mm-hmm. He had recruited me out of high school. Okay. So we already had a relationship. We talked on the phone a few times. Okay. And I just felt like it was it was right up the way. People can still come to the games and all that. And um I just knew they was like one piece away from like getting over the top. Yep. So I went there my first year we won the ship, went to the NCAA tournament. And now on that team was KD on that team? Who? Kendrick Davis? No. They they had just graduated, I think a year or two before me. Calvin Watson too? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was the last okay. team that went to the tournament though. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. I was, it's a. It's funny because Jermaine Green also played North Texas. He did. When I was in college, I played against um, Manger in college. So they got a lot of actually Houston connections. Yeah. At North Texas. So your junior year, you at North Texas. Yeah. Y'all won a conference championship. Yeah. Playing a tournament. Playing the tournament. Play K State. Jacob Pullen. Oh. Okay. All them dudes. Okay. Yeah. They had that fast point go off from Puerto Rico. I can't think yeah, of his name. Yeah, exactly what you're talking about. Okay. And uh, they smacked us, though. Uh-huh. They, smacked us. <laughs> they smacked us. And so your senior year coming up, what's that like for you knowing like, you had a good year as a junior? What was your thought process going to your senior Well, you know, the thing at North Texas is, like, I didn't really, like, my, I got love and respect for Johnny Jones. But, yep. like, he used to tell me, like, if you shoot the ball, you on the bench. Like, you literally really? used to tell me that. Yeah, like, he was more, he wanted me to play, like, defense, run the flow, glue guy type. Like, mm-hmm. he ain't really want me, like, trying to score, shoot the ball, Y'all break had off scores from already? Uh, quote, unquote, yeah. Okay. We had scores, you know. Okay. Uh, we had Josh White, Trish and Thompson, George Oda, uh, Adufawa. Okay. Eric Tramiel. We had, we, had some, we had some dudes that can hoop, you know okay. what I mean? His yep. system is very, it was very, like, catered to those guys. Okay. And, like, uh-huh. the other guys who, like me, we had to kind of, like, figure it out, you know. But uh at the end of the day I know he had a job too. Yep. And like he gonna make sure we in the best position to win. So, you know, he can continue to provide yeah. for his family and et cetera. So now talk about um coming from JUCO. Yep. You first team on everything. You put yep. it in the in the basket, you scoring. Yep. Now you coming to back to D one and you gotta be a glue guy. Does your mentality change? It was tough on me because, like, like I tell kids all the time, I say, look, like, a coach can make or break you. But at the end of, end of the day, you still got to control what's in your control, still got to show up every day, still got to compete, still got to put the work in when nobody watching. But him telling me that and telling me, like, look, I don't need you shooting the ball. They, You know, just literally, like, yeah, putting stuff in me that's like, dang, like, I'm wide open. Now, and did if, that make you gunshot in the game? Did, did, did it, like, take your confidence? It made me look me? over my shoulder. Uh-huh. And I feel like that's the worst player you can be. Yep. I feel like, like Gilbert Arena said it on his podcast, like a dog without a leash. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. then when you have a dog contained, you're not really scared. But like, who? What player would you rather be? 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you're not looking over your shoulder and you know, like, if I shoot free. this, yeah. I'm free. I don't got no worries. I'm but good. Yeah. But, like, if you got to shoot a shot, then you like, dang, is that, is that going to make me come out the game mm-hmm. and et cetera? Mm-hmm. It can really play with your psyche. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I mean? We won, so I can't really. And so senior year, it was still the same. Just same as that. Blue guys. I had a few games my senior year where I had, like, 24, 25, and et cetera, but. I'm a, okay. It was a preseason game. I had 25, right? The very first game of the season was like three days later. Yep. He played me four minutes. Said I was out there looking too cool. I'm like, too cool? How you look cool? Like, but you know. Um, and this type of stuff, like, players in college deal with. Oh, for sure. And so, like, I, I, I want people to understand that, like, what he's describing, like, it's a, a, a normal a normal occurrence. Mm-hmm. Like, you have a guy who, High level. The the anytime I think about like this situation, I think about it, it's a dude, Sean Dockery, mm-hmm. but at Duke, mm-hmm. he was a big time scorer. Mickey D out of Chicago, O two. He came to Duke, like they made him a glue guy, yeah. defender as well. Wow. Glue guy, assist guy, like that. How you change somebody whole game? Like I'm talking that. about like a high level. You ask dude from Chicago about Sean Dockery, like yo, he he was him he was one in high him. school, yeah. right? Go to Duke, coach here, like yo. I got your Reddick. I got Dan <laughs> Ewan. I got Boozer. I got Dunleavy. Like, I don't need you doing none of that. Yo, you got to be the glue guy defender. And so, like, it changed his whole game and essentially changed his career. Yeah. And so, well, you saying uh, you having 25, a big game preseason, and then he play you four minutes because you look cool. It's like, again, that's a situation where it could kill somebody's confidence. Kill. Like, destroy it. Absolutely. But for you, mentally, how would you have to lock in? And like you're like, you know I what? Just, I just really just I feel like you just gotta accept the situation you in. Like if you keep fighting it, it's gonna be worse for you because you're gonna keep trying to overcompensate, overdo things that you in a sense not allowed to do. Mm-hmm. I hate how that sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh just accepting the role and just saying, All right, look, if this is what he wants from me, I'm gonna do this just to be on the flow. That was my mindset. Like, I'm gonna defend, I'm gonna rebound, run the flow hard, so just so I can be on the court. It's better for me to play than to not to play. That was my mindset because I love the hoop. I love to compete. And, uh, you know, we had some success. So, And do you think by having that mentality and having playing that role for those two years, it helped you prepare for your professional career? Absolutely not. Oh, it did not help you? Nah, not at all because oh, okay. I feel like um, like when you go overseas as a pro, like they not looking for you to be a glue guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They looking for you to like, okay, we brought you here to – Score, score play, help yeah. us win games. Like, yeah. you being a glue guy, I can get yeah, one of my, my, I mean, my locals yeah, yeah, to do local, that. Correct, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, uh, so when I graduated from UNT, I was down a year and a half. When I say down, I mean I was like, I didn't have no job. I didn't, I was broke. Uh, it was a lot of tension in my mama's household because she, she, had, she had stopped working. And my brother, he, they had cut his hours at his job. So it was, you know. If, oh, come if, on now. We got to talk about that. If money ain't coming in, it's kind of like. You know, that can... Yeah, so, again, people think you play in college four years, play in college, you graduate, you play on a big stage, like you Division One, you automatically get a job. Yeah, I was down. That's not the case. So, you graduate, you get an agent. I did have an agent. You yeah. had an agent. He's yeah. shopping you around, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Every, see, every day is a no. Everything I, I tell no. people, yo, like that, waiting on a gig is probably one of the toughest things you could do as a player. Oh, for sure. You see other guys getting gigs, you like, yo, you start looking on back then, Eurobasket.com. Like you look at every day, like, oh, he he got on, he got on. You kinda like you start looking around like, yo, like, what's up? Nah, that was the uh that year and a half was the best time for me though. I feel like that was like the God gap that God had for me where you gotta like grow, mm-hmm. learn. So what were you yourself. doing every day? Just working. Working out four and five times a day with Big Luke. Uh well, a year lifting, and a half. Year and a half straight, running hills. What made you um, stay with it as opposed to be like, you know what, man? Because a, a lot of guys would have been like, you know what? This ain't for me. I was right there on the cusp. Right there on the cusp. Right? Mm-hmm. So not by my doing, though. Right? So, yeah. like, you got to realize, like, I was broke. So, like, when I used to go to workouts, like, after the workouts, I was sleep in the gym because I ain't had gas to go back to A-Leaf, pull back all the way up to Fourth Ward to work out at Lutheran North. You know what I'm saying? So I was sleep in my car. Shout out to Tony Washington. He'll keep the gym unlocked. He'll let me sleep in the gym until the next workout type. Uh, I used to recycle McDonald's cup, go get free drinks. Till the uh, the G, the the manager uh, ran down on me and was like, "I see what you you see what you're doing. You feel me?" But you know, I was just trying to make it work. So I yo, feel like there's hey, a lot oh, of sacrifices. Hey man, that's, yo, you listen again. People talk about like 
what it really takes. And again, I I think it's a testament yeah, to absolutely. who you are. You know what I'm saying? To say like where you were then to where you are now. And like you'll see, man, guys like they'll give up after a month. Oh, factual. After two months. And, and I, t- I tell all the homies all the time, I say, look, it, the battle is in your mind, bro. All you got to do is keep going. No matter how difficult it may look, no matter how worse your circumstance may be, I always revert back to uh, Job in the Bible. Like, he lost everything mm-hmm. in, like, a week span. Lost the way of his income, lost his family, lost his, his wife was looking at him crazy, lost his kids, lost everything. But his response is what sustained him. The Bible say he didn't curse God, he didn't say a bad word against God, sin against God. He worshiped God, though. Like, he pra- how you praise somebody that took everything yeah, from you? Correct. You feel me? And, yeah. and just his mentality, like, Look, I'm in this situation. The Lord give, the Lord take it away. Blessed be in His name, and that's a word for me. Like that kept me grounded. My sister prayers, my mama prayers, my grandma prayers. But um, the thing that really just kept me going was just I'm passionate about this. Like this ain't no like hobby for me. Like yeah. this ain't something that like wasn't just something you were doing for the ground for the right. cloud. You feel me? Like yeah. I really like love it. Love this. Like you feel mm. me? From like yeah, hey yo, listen. I, I heard a lot of stories, that, like from a lot of different guys. 40 now like but I don't think I've ever heard of somebody with your talent level and things you've done like say you slept in your car slept in the gym yeah at the work I had to cause like that's the, that's the uh, stuff I had to get through those are some sacrifices I had to make because again if I would've went home I wasn't coming back so it was mm-hmm. like look either you gonna just you know chill for these little 2-3 hours or whatever the case may be or go home and then just wait till the next day Cause there's no in between with me. Like I was negative in the red. I had to t- like negative in the red, and I had. To, I used to tell my. I was like, Mama, look, stop giving me bread. I'm a man. I'm gonna figure it out. And she had to respect it. I'm like, Mama, I'm not taking your bread. Like she took. She tried to give me money for like the first few months. Okay, cool. I'm your son, respectfully. But mm-hmm. after that, I'm like, Look, I'm gonna figure this out. And um, so a year and a half in, my man Kerry Carter gave me a, a yeah. job. Yeah. Gave me a job. Gave me an opportunity to like park cars on a parking lot during baseball season. Okay. And he'd give me $50 a day for three days out the week. And that really sustained me during that period, which was perfect timing because. Now, Shane, now listen now. You 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 saying a lot. This is the guy who, Division One basketball player. Yeah, respectfully. Juco, All-American, All-Region. Yeah. Now you trying to get overseas. You can't not get on. You working out four or five times a day. Instead of blaming the world, instead of blaming Keith White, instead of blaming Johnny Jones, you could have yeah. easily you could have easily done that. Thanks. Easily. Thanks. You were like, you know what? I'm gonna do what I gotta do to make ends meet. Yeah. This is like I'm saying, like this is like a more than a life lesson. This is like these the, these are like gems. Yeah. And I think people, especially kids watching, people like can understand like you did whatever you had to do, even parking cars at a parking lot. Yeah. Just just for the dream. Yeah. Like, keep it going. So I was trying to, like, get part-time jobs at Walmart, CVS Pharmacy. I remember CVS called me back one time. They thought I was a female. It was like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you was a female. You know, I got a unisex name. Yeah. Cool. It is what it is. But that's just how, like, my experience was going. It just seemed like everything was a, a no. And um, I stayed prayed up. I used to meet my pastor weekly. He used to pray for me. And um, what shifted was crazy when we first started this interview you were saying about the uh travel tour you went on yeah so my man steve walton i don't know if you know yeah, him yeah, steve, of course he coaching in mexico now i'm real close with that whole family Damn, went yeah. to school with him yeah. middle school high school all that oh, like they okay. my people yeah so he hit me and he was like look backtrack one of one of the hardest things to do is like continuously show up every day oh man not knowing if that opportunity that you search, that you craving going to come. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So you really just, it may seem like you working in vain, but like you really building for like when it come, but you just got to stay down. Now let me ask you another the, question. It was no girlfriend at the time. You just grinding. Nah, I mean, I, I, I remember at that time I was, it was, I was like 22. This is a funny story. Truthfully. It was like, it was like <laughs> this, uh, uh, I was you, you, to, you know how it is. I mean, dude trying to make it. Nah, fact, no money. Fact, like, fact, Women but I'm a self aware man. I'm honest. Okay. Like, I'm not going. Okay. So I, it was this like 35 year old I was talking to. And I told her straight up, I say, <laughs> look, like, I can't do nothing for you. Yeah. Like, I'm at my mama house. I'm driving my Bonneville. Barely got gas. 
I'm broke. I can't take you on no date. I can't. I can't <laughs> nothing. do nothing for you, bro. Like yeah. you, she respected it. Yeah. Like look, I, she was like, I respect that. And I'm just like, I'm being honest with you. Yeah. She still wanted to rock. I'm like, look, I can't even. You can't even. I'm a, as a man, I feel like if you not in a position to at least like take care of yourself, like yeah, how you gonna take care? Of how you gonna take care of somebody else? Correct. You feel yeah. me? So like, yeah. if you trying out here to. Go to the club, splurge, mm -hmm. date these women, mm -hmm. but you don't even got no nine to five or not, got no kind of source of income to go to a house to sleep and all that. You you know what I'm saying? Like, your priorities back. Yeah. And I was just very self-aware of just like, look, like, that's going to be there. Like, you got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Like, either you're going to be here or you're going to be homeless. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'm going to be 40 years old staying with my mama. Like, yeah. I just don't. Hell Couldn't no. Do, yeah. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah. hell no. Yeah. So, like. Um, fast forward. Yeah. Me, Walter, Steve. Steve, he hit me. He was like, look, Shan, look, I'm taking a team to Mexico mm -hmm. for a, a travel tournament at the end of the week. Yeah. And it, it's crazy how your psychic work because, and I tell young guys this all the time. I'm sorry, I keep, it's, no, it's just hitting me. Yeah, I tell young guys this all the time, like, when you get your first look, it's not going to be what you expect. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Like, yeah. you're not finna just sign for 20 bands yeah. a month all top. Yeah. Like, t mm -hmm. your name ain't Gemma for that out of college. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Like, yeah. you finna see about one to two bands, three bands. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So, max. Yeah. Max. Like, respectfully. But yeah. this going to show you if you're really passionate about Correct. what you want to do. Correct. So he hit me. But this how your psyche work. Like, you get so many no's that you don't even see mm -hmm. the opportunity in front of you. That God been didn't open the door for you. And I told him that immediately, I ain't doing that, bro. Like, I'm cool. You told Steve no. I told him no. He was like, Shan, I'm going to call you in a few days. Just pray about it. Think about it. Do what you got to do. Okay. But I'm telling you, like, this situation going to take off for you. I'm like, mm, it is what it is. So over the next few days, I'm like, bro, like, what you got to lose? Mm -hmm. Like, you can either sit here and know you not going to have no opportunity yep. or go see put yourself in a position just yeah. see what could shake right yeah. mm -hmm. i say bad good i say uh he hit me uh the night before we was gonna leave i said yeah i'm coming he said all right meet me at the fund at 6 a.m we drive across the border like eight hours right so we uh we get across the border whatever we play the next day um we played a team that just won the championship the season prior okay right kill him go off for like 35 right uh -huh. gm walk up to me right after the game take my information yeah I ain't think nothing of it. I'm like, you yeah. know, it, you know, we'll see what happened. Cool. Two days later, he hit me. I got a team for you. Ooh, the GM when, or yeah, Steve? GM. Oh, wow. He was like, I got a team for you. When can you leave? I'm on DA in uh, uh, West Time at that 24. Okay. About to go work out with my cousin. I said, I could have left yesterday. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> and, and I started screaming in the car, crying in the car. Because it was real for me. Like, yeah. And I ain't tell my mama because every time I told her something was about so to shake, happy. it fell through. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, he was like, right, I'm going to get the ticket for you. Give me about, give me a few days. A few days go by, a week go by. I hit him on the, uh, the gym on a uh, Friday night, right? And I was like, hey, I'm just tapping back in with you, just wondering what's going on. I ain't heard from you. He was like, yeah, I was just about to call you. This is like 1130 at night. He said, you leave at 430 in the morning. Oh, wow. He said, I'm j I just shot you the ticket in your email. So I'm like, all right, I don't say nothing to my mama. I say, mama, uh, I'm going to Mexico tomorrow. We, you know, yeah. she ain't believe me. I'm in my room packing my bags. She coming there. She said, oh, you really leaving? I said, yeah, we we good now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what I told her. She dropped me off at the airport. She ain't believe me until we got to, we got to the airport. She boo crying. Yeah. Like, mama, what you crying for? We on now. Yeah. Like, we good. Believe me. Right? And the crazy part about that story is, like, literally, like, a week before Steve called me, my mama told me, like, look, like, baby boy, you probably need to go on head. Job. Do some with your degree, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. And you graduated, North graduated Texas. communication degree out there. Oh yeah. So okay. she was like, uh, "I'm, you know, I just don't think it's gonna work in your favor." And I don't think she was like shooting down my dream, but I think she was just paying attention and just being a nurturing mother and just saying, "Look, it's, okay. it's more to life. Yeah, it's cool. It's okay. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You put your best foot forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just ain't work out mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Cool. We go by. Yeah. I get to Mexico. Crazy! I feel like I feel like my story. What city? I was in Mexico City. I was oh, in, okay. I was in eventually. Watch I watch the breakdown. Okay. So I signed with a team for three bands a month. Cool. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't Whoa. even expect that. Cool. Yeah. Right. That team trade me. Right. To 
the worst team in the league, quote unquote, right? Mm-hmm. I practiced with that team one day. That team trade me, right? So like my first ten days, I'm traveling on the bus, Greyhound. So I'm walking through the bus station. Coach come up to me, Luis Garcia. Appreciate you always. He said, "You shorty, shorty, shorty." I said, "Yeah, had a sign." He said, "All right, come on, you with me." So we drive back to uh, uh, the hotel where we were staying in, etc. Next day, he meet with me. He's like, "Look, I don't got no money. I don't got money, too much money to give you, but I'm gonna give you this opportunity. I'm gonna put the ball in your hands. Do what you do. Play for five hundred dollars a month. Real life." First gig. The whole five, season. Whole season. Five hundred dollars a month. Mm. I sent my mom about three fifty because she still wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Gave my ties to the church. So I'm really living off about a hundred dollars a month. Well. Right. Respectfully, cool. I'm not tripping, right? So I'm sleeping in a twin bed. Uh but again, like all these experiences I'm experiencing in, in Mexico City, I came up on a twin bed. Yeah. So it wasn't like nothing. Much. Yeah. Nothing surprising Same. to me. Like yeah. I feel like this just I feel like your experiences can shape you though. Like, mm. if this what you experience, it ain't nothing that can really shake that or shift that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I had three free meals a day, so I was oh, okay. I was cool. You're okay, yeah. right? And the place to stay, the place to stay, little dorm room, twin okay. bed. Oh, okay. nothing. Respectfully, we go to the grocery store here, buy a grocery. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm not mm-hmm. tripping, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just so grateful for the opportunity. And I tell young people all the time, I say, look, when I got my opportunity, I just pray for the opportunity. I didn't pray for a million dollar contract. Mm-hmm. I pray. I said, God, just put me in position. Ooh, right? You bars. put me in position. I know what yeah, I'm going to do after that. Bars. Right? Yeah. And so I led the league in scoring average 28. 12 years later, we here. Mm. So after that first gig, $500 a month. $500 a month. You kill it. Kill it. What's the next gig like for you? Me- Mexico again? Argentina, 5K a month. Oh, so then you got the call. Yeah. I went there for like the finishing of the season. Uh, went back to Mexico in the summer league. Okay, the Ciba right? Copa. Ciba Copa. Just off, I got that just off a game I had against uh Myron Allen, though. Mm-hmm. Right, his his coach mm-hmm. went crazy on him. Uh, on eighteen, mm-hmm. uh, his coach uh was like right after the game called me to his bus like, hey, I coach in the Ciba Copa. I want you on my team. Again, I ain't thinking nothing of it. Yeah. All right, cool. He started DMing me on Facebook. Yeah, like he, I said, oh, you serious? <laughs> oh yeah, four thousand a month. So at, at so like as I'm like my first like like year, I was literally like doing all this on my own. I ain't have an agent. Nothing. From there, I went to Ecuador, made like another four k a month for like three months. That's why I met my agent mm-hmm. through a teammate. Okay. And then went to Israel, and then took off. Took off from there. So <clears throat> the journey where you starting out at five hundred dollars a month. Again, man, it's similar. My first gig, Division Two, Germany, fifteen hundred dollars a month. Respectfully, just like same. I ain't had no. I averaged four point four points a game my last year at TCU. Yeah, yeah. Two games, double figures, no real like yeah. stats. Yeah, I was six three and two. I just, I, just like yo, my my agent who Justin Haynes, shout out to Justin Haynes. He a big. Now he worked for WME. He got. Lottery picks to Anthony Black and Jarris Walker, a big time major. Shout out to my dude Justin Haynes. He was like, "Yo, I got a team for you in Geese in Germany, Division Two, but it's, just, it's a chance." Yeah, all you need. So I'm like, "Bad," <laughs> like, but I mean, it was fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah, you know, people think like, "Yo, it's, it was it's nothing," but for me, that's everything. It was everything. I was everything. like, "Yo, I got an opportunity." It wasn't even about the bread. No, it was just. I mean, I tell people the story like. Uh, Thanksgiving, my first Thanksgiving in Europe, me and my teammate Mark Reed, we eat chicken sandwich at the K Bob spot. Like yeah. I'm boot like teared up crying, like, yeah. dang, dog, like I'm used to be home for Thanksgiving, but yeah. I know like this is my chance. Yeah. You know, if I really yeah. want to hoop. Absolutely. So you telling that story to like where you are now, like the journey, like for you, what has it been like from starting the twin bed Mexico fire also? Being one of the better players in Europe in a country like Croatia where it's basketball crazy. Yeah. So, like, I feel like, like again, I said that year and a half, I feel like that was that God gap that God gave me to, like, mm-hmm. prepare myself. I mm-hmm. think I think about the story about David and Goliath, right? You know, he was anointed king at 17. He ain't, he ain't getting to the – to the – to the – hit the throne until he was 30. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But he met Goliath a couple years later. And, and the thing about David was he was in the field. Killing lions, bears, all that, right? Yeah. 
preparing himself, not even knowing what, what he preparing coming. himself for. Mm-hmm. So when Goliath came, it wasn't no uh, uh switch. Yeah. It wasn't like I'm finna rise to the occasion. He's like, nah, I'm finna just continuously do what, what I've, I've been, been doing. doing. Yeah. So when I was down that year and a half working with Coach Luke, I got to show love to Byron Smith too. He took me in, just really just, I feel, like I tell the story, like I feel like Coach Luke, he literally like threw me in the jungle yeah. and was, it expected you to come back 10 pounds overweight with a cheetah coat. Yep. You feel me? Like, yeah. put like you got to get it on your own. Like, yep. you got to figure it out. Byron really just taught me, like, the skills, like, footwork, pivot, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, right? So, like, that year and a half, when I got that opportunity in Mexico, I feel like I had a year and a half of sweat equity mm-hmm. and, like, internal rage yep. that people wasn't expecting. Mm-hmm. So, when I teed up in Mexico, I, I already expect, I already knew what I was going to do, Right. Cause that's how I knew the opportunity when it came. I knew it exactly what I was gonna do, but like so, like that just gave me more confidence. So twelve years later, to be in the position I'm in now, um, I feel like I did what I was what I thought I would do. You know, if I got one opportunity, mm-hmm. and I tell people all the time, you may not get another opportunity. Like you get this first look, like if you don't separate yourself with this first look, yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen after that. Mm-hmm. And you got to be honest with yourself too, though. Like you can't. Blame coaches, blame not yeah. like be honest with yourself. You wasn't working, you wasn't trying to do everything you needed to do to be yeah. put yourself in the best position possible and etc. So the the uh the outcome of that was what you what what you received. So uh, I'm I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna shift a little bit, man, because um I see you with your wife. Again, I, I always tell dudes, man, like one thing about me, me and my wife, we're gonna have a a fantastic time. Yeah. I'm gonna take her everywhere. It's my best friend. We're gonna rock out. We're gonna travel the world. We're gonna experience things. And it seemed like you that same way with your wife. Yeah. How's that been like for you? Um being married and playing basketball, you know, overseas. So I feel like this year probably be the toughest year because she's going back to the classroom. Mm-hmm. Like she in education. She loves okay. impacting the youth, impacting our kids. So uh I don't wanna hold you back from what you love to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? But um, I've been knowing her since I was 15. Okay. We was real good friends in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, we probably started dating seriously like five, six years ago. Okay. And then got married. We were two-year anniversary, so mm-hmm. praise God for that. But um, that's my dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like she um, challenged me differently from, like, anybody else on earth. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Really just from a mental standpoint and make me – not make me, but uh, – uh, yeah, make me forces me not to to be accountable and yeah. be vulnerable and yep. be honest and mm-hmm. uh, uh, have those hard conversations. And then at the same time, she nurtured me as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, that's my road dog. Yeah, yeah. And she been supportive from the journey. Yeah, she's supportive for sure. Mm-hmm. Like obviously, like you can't make decisions on your own no more. Mm-hmm. You got to really like communicate and. With this basketball, I love it so much. When I first started, I wanted to go till I was 40. That was my yeah, goal, right? Yep. So, But the timeline probably shifted because of marriage. Mm-hmm. So I'm like on a year by year right now. I don't really know what will come mm-hmm. year to year. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I do know I'm still very passionate about it. And yep. uh, I still love it. And I enjoy the process of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very supportive, though. Very supportive. It's just the distance can be, you know, trying at times. Tough, yeah. So. As – um. A married man playing, obviously being a pro basketball player, like in your responsibility now changing. What does that mean for you to 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 be like, yo, like this is my, you know, this is my wife, it's my family, like we represent each other, but like I'm the I'm the head of the household, like I got to be a leader. Mm-hmm. It's different being a leader as a pro as opposed to like leading a family, leading a wife. How has I guess your journey prepared you for marriage and, and for the, the relationship. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. Like, cause I ain't see that in my family. Mm-hmm. I ain't see too many married husbands mm-hmm. taking care of their wives. My, I got a cousin, he been married a long time. My auntie and her husband, they been yeah. married a long time. But just from like a yeah, straight perspective yeah. that I can mm-hmm. see, I haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. My pops wasn't in my life. So yep. I really had to learn from, I was ro- raised by all women. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, really got to learn on my own. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And look to certain men that I feel like live a, a principle-driven life, honorable life, mm-hmm. and take bits and pieces from that. Mm-hmm. And um, 
but it's it's not easy just really being. I feel like the hardest conversations is the conversations you have with yourself. Yeah. Well, you gotta be honest with yourself and and hold yourself accountable, mm-hmm. even though it may be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. uh, it definitely wasn't easy, but I'm still working at it, still yeah. growing at it. Yeah. So. No, that's big, man. Um, it's only right foundation should oh, profit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what does that mean to you? Talk about that. That's my baby. Uh, so like. Everything I'm doing now is what I envisioned when I was broke. Mm-hmm. Everything. Like, wrote it down. I want to have a foundation. I want to be 10 plus years pro. I want to be married. I want to put my people in position. I want to get my important, How important was that for you, Sharon, to, like, write down? Your, I, I tell young people all the time, like, even to this day now, I need to do more of it. But, like, when I was really getting shit done, like, when I'm on a roll, I write down in my little notebook every day. All mm-hmm. right, this week I'm going to do – these 30, 20 things, yeah. uh, cross it off. How important is that for you to write down your goals and write down your vision? I mean, I feel like it just keeps you uh, honed in on the promise you made to yourself. Mm-hmm. And, like, I feel like I, I think about what Kobe Bryant said. Uh, I made that contract with myself. So once I made that contract with myself, it was a non-negotiable. Yeah. Right? And so that was just my mindset. Like, no matter how comfortable it may get, like, cause it's gonna be some situations you're gonna be in that's gonna make you almost think to fold, quit, and 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 etc. But you just gotta stay firm, stay solid, you know. And so me writing it down was just that, like just really re- receiving the exact thing that I'm putting out. So you reading it out loud, you reading it, and you writing it on it, and you writing on what you expect to put out. And uh, it usually come back to you once you put the action behind it mm-hmm. and stay down with it, you know. Um, so the foundation, that's a big piece of who I am just as a human being from a sense of just always just showing love to my people and just being of service to my people, whether it's the free basketball camp I have or, like, uh, the haircut, haircut back-to-school drive I have for the kids where they don't, you know, pay anything. Yeah. The turkey giveaway I have in CUNY Homes and A-Leaf as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just being of service to the people because I know uh, what it's like being in uncomfortable situations and, like, not knowing, thinking this is, like, how life's supposed to be. Yeah. Until, like, you go to school or something, you be like, ah, nah, like, mm-hmm. that's just, y'all y'all got different experiences than Correct. what we got. You know what I'm saying? And my mm-hmm. mama, she was a hustler. She was from South Park. So the thing my mama taught me at a young age was just I always figure it out and never make an excuse. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she never made an excuse. She worked in education for 30 years when we grew up in Park Village. Mm-hmm. And then she was also the cool cup lady on the side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I never understood why. I'm just thinking we got extra snacks in the house, but it was yeah. because, like, I'm going to do whatever I got to do just to make sure my family okay. is cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be the, uh, the, 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 the Obamas. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But we still going to be, we going to be cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. ain't going to go without. Yeah. And she made sure of that. So um, that's how I feel like I just owe that to my people. Like, mm-hmm. And when I say my people, I mean whoever I can be of service to. Mm-hmm. Scholarship giveaways for the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if you can invest in somebody and tell them you believe in them, words go a long way. But when you put action behind that mm-hmm. and they getting a, a bond or something at school or whatever case may be where they don't feel like going to class, they don't feel like studying, they may be behind on some some homework or something, not turning their grades or whatever, they going to remember that person who said, look, I believe in you. I'm investing in you to accomplish what you said you wanted to accomplish, not me. Yeah. But I believe in what you're trying to accomplish, and I feel like that'll go a long way with them, with the with the kids and with the youth because they just I feel like some people just need somebody just to push them and just 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 have their back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And everybody can't self motivate themselves. Some people need to see something, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's what those scholarships do. So the foundation that's that's uh I hope it I hope it continues to grow. I'm getting some more sponsors and etc. with people and. Uh, building those relationships, so I'm excited about that for sure. What's your plans after basketball? You thought about that already? I have actually. Uh, I want to be a commentator. Okay. Yeah, I like to debate. I like to do that kind of stuff. But I mean, I can go into coaching. Some people have reached out to me to coach. Oh, good. Um, okay. Those two things for sure. Mm-hmm. Like off top, mm-hmm. uh, I want to build my real estate portfolio. Okay. Um, but yeah, those two off top for sure. Um. Man, I like I'm I'm not gonna lie. We've had a few guests on the show, man, who like been fantastic, man. Tommy Mason Griffin was a good interview. We had Teddy Wheeler, a really good interview, a bunch of good interviews. This probably was 
I mean, it's so many gems in this one, dog. Like, I, I'm, it's so many clips I could use. Um, <laughs> no, nah, man, because I ain't even know your story that in that in depth. Yeah. And I think, man, like what you shown and what the what you've described is something that can help like a lot of people, mm -hmm. like all our people. And I, I'm I'm really thankful and I'm glad uh, we got got a chance to like put you on this platform, you to join us today because this is stuff, man. Like I I, I try to tell people like. Guys, when they when they said they want to be a pro, mm -hmm. and you know, I always said representation matters. Yeah, you somebody these kids can look at and be like, "Yo, dog, like he has gone through every like all these different stages of life." Yeah, like high school basketball player, AAU college basketball player, JUCO, back to Division One, a pro, a pro, like for years. And I, I, I think your journey, your story, it can help people because kids need to see like, yo, like. He went to Westside. I go to Elstick. I go to Hastings. I go to Willow Ridge. Like, mm -hmm. if he can do it, I can too. So, one, I appreciate you for coming on. Two, I appreciate you for even telling your story and being able to to, to, to put it out there. And, again, man, for me, like, I want to give you your flowers. I think you obviously besides being a consummate pro, like, what you do in the community, um, with your wife, with your family, what you stand on is really, like, what makes our basketball culture in this city, what it is. Mm -hmm. That's another question I'm glad I asked you that. What do you think of the pro basketball culture in Houston? I currently? tell people, I, I, I remember last year, I was with uh, Cinco, five, Cam Reynolds. Uh, we was uh, we was in the same league. And uh, we was just, you know, politicking. And I told him, I said, hey, bro, it's a lot of hoopers from the city, like, really putting on, like, overseas in the league, you know. Yeah. And – you got to respect it. You got to yeah. show love to it. You know, I feel like Houston, one of the most, I wouldn't say savage, but like competitive cities yeah. mm -hmm. to come up out of. Correct. Right. Yep. Only other city I can think that I've been to where I was like, okay, yeah, they, they out here getting to it is Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I had a whole summer in Chicago and that was some of the best runs I ever had yep. outside of, you know, the city. But um, yep. I respect the city. You know, it's a lot of hoopers in the city that, you know, deserve their flowers, deserve yeah. their respect, and et cetera. But, um, like, I tell people all the time, you shouldn't be in competition, just be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because your consistency going to show. Yep. If oh, you worry sure. about the next man trying to compete against the next man, you're going to slow down your, uh, uh, your rise. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But if yep. you just show up every day 1% better each day or half percent better, as long as you get better each day, Doing consistently showing up, doing what you're supposed to do. You're going to reap so, what you sow. Yep. All right, usually <clears throat> at the end of each show, we, we do what we call uh, Sloan Cold Facts. Okay. Right? So in the Sloan Cold Facts, I want you to name five of the best players you played against. Okay. And then five of the best players you played with. Five of the best players I played against. Uh, off top, number one, J.R. Smith. Mm -hmm. James Harden. Uh... Sims, uh, D. Harrison, mm -hmm. Jacob and Brown. Mm -hmm. Five you played with, five best. Five best I played with, uh, Josh Childress. Oh, you played with Josh, okay. Um, Mitch, Mitch Creek, um, Tony Mitchell. Mm -hmm. That was Mustangs. Sims. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, five. Uh, cat named Ricardo Ratliff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shannon Shorter, man. Again, I appreciate you for joining Sloan Cold Facts. This was a fantastic episode, man. Um, I think a lot of people will be touched and and and. Blessed by this episode, and I appreciate you, brother. Giving you your flowers, man. Thank you for joining Sloan Car Facts. We appreciate you. Appreciate the love, fam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.